I am so nervous. I'm just picturing it like sliding down the hill over and over and over again. Now that we have survived putting our windows and door in, it's time to move on. I think that the siding step is gonna go super fast, but we'll see. I am so excited for the siding. It's something that has been sitting there taunting us for so long and we finally get to do it. And not only that, but I am super excited for the wainscoting because we did something a little special. Quite a few of you had asked why one of our wall girts is a two by six instead of a two by four. And that is because this is what the wainscoting is gonna mount to. So we need room for our wall panels, the trim, and our upper wall panels to all meet on this one connection. Our neighbor likes to say, if you don't like the weather in North Idaho, just wait a few minutes. <laughs> it's beautiful and sunny this morning, and now it's raining. Bailey does not like the rain though. We're about to install the trim that goes between our wainscot on the bottom and the wall up at the top. It is super critical that this be laser straight because your eye is just gonna wanna look right down that thing every time you look at the building. That was the easy part. Now we need to make this wrap around this corner and look good. We've watched a bunch of Kyle's videos from RR Buildings. He does an amazing job of going into the details of this and he does incredible work. So we're hoping to just basically do exactly what he does. And if it looks even half as good, I will be stoked. It worked! Nice. <laughs> So notice that standing in this direction, this seam basically disappears. But if you look at it from this direction, it's significantly more obvious. And so for that reason, we're gonna stand in the front of the building most often. So we're making sure that when you stand in the front and look down the building, those seams overlap so that they disappear. So to get that nice sharp seam, we're just splitting the hem open with a utility knife. And then we just nip this corner off at like a 30 degree angle. And then this piece slides in behind that piece and that notch slides into that hem we split open and makes a nice transition and kind of locks these together so that they cannot separate. And this laser tripod that we have is super cool. It's got this deal that clamps onto the pole that has a fine adjustment so you can easily tune it up and down. I'll link to this in the description below. This thing has been so amazing. It also comes with like this tension rod. So if you're tiling a bathroom, you don't even have to use the tripod. You can just tension it between the floor and the ceiling. It's amazing. This is one of those tools that I had no idea I needed and now I can't live without it. Boone. Boone didn't like Bailey's freedom. He was working on some freedom of his own. The difference is, is that if we give Boone the same freedom that Bailey gets, he'd be someone else's dog by now. He just runs off. A few of you have been telling us we need a scissor lift and we entirely agree with you. We could not find one for rent. And then Riley found a guy on Facebook. This should make things a lot easier and go a lot quicker and a lot safer. Now we gotta drive it on our road and our road's a little bit wet right now. So Ooh. we will see how this goes. The guy said that it's gonna drive up our steep road, no problem. Um, I don't know if he knows how steep our road is though. He's gonna show Riley how to run it by driving it up the road, which makes me feel better. I am so nervous. I'm just picturing it like sliding down the hill over and over and over again. I'm gonna hold my breath still. Oh man, it's stressful. It's very stressful. It's not a good sign. <laughs> oh. 
Well, they made it to our last little steep spot. So Riley's gonna go down with the excavator and give it a little tug. All right, let's see how this goes. Two inch long, cut side to finish, dim by snapping, tab out. <laughs> I wrote these this morning. <laughs> no idea what they mean. Now, I have driven this thing further than probably anyone else that's ever operated it has, <laughs> but that doesn't mean I know how to operate it. Pull that guy out. Welcome to my deck. I have no issue with heights, but I do have an issue trusting Riley to navigate me at heights. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Won't get stuck up here, right? Uh, no, he says even if it's off, you can still pull that into the loader. Oh, it's hydraulic. So we are getting. Oh, but don't rock it. We are getting the bottom and the side window trims on. The top window trim won't come until after we have our siding up. This flashing tape goes underneath the top one, so that water is always going over the top, and then no flashing tape on the top of the bottom of the window flange because if water does get back here we want it to be able to escape on this side of the house wrap. Measure twice, cut once. My number is supposed to be 23 and a half. I cut this to 23 because I wrote 23 on the wall. I don't know why. It's too short. It fits nicely down here but it's too short at the top. Hopefully we'll have enough of this when we get all the way around, we'll find out. So back here, the side is on top of the bottom so that any water that somehow makes it behind our sheet metal would come down this and off. And then this tab is underneath the bottom and then the front goes over the bottom. Final step is to cut this little notch off. And that Booyah. also, not only does that trim it off, but it crimps this around that bottom and keeps all of this solid. We're back at it today and I am so glad we have the scissor left. <laughs> this thing is making this job way easier. I can't, I think there's some places I couldn't even reach with a ladder, so. We're gonna get the rest of these windows trimmed out and then we can move on to putting siding on.
Now that we have all our window trim done, it's time to put up our first wall panel. I'm super excited. Hopefully they fit. All right, there we go. Woo! Okay, so you need to get the bottom edge lined up on our mark. The first wall panel is on. All our measurements lined up. Things look plumb and square, and we are super stoked on that. Now we've got the first sheet up. It's time to measure over for our window cutout. We're gonna have to cut this sheet around the window. You good? So now we're gonna mark out the entire hole pattern for the walls and then use this awl to punch the pattern in. That way when we're up in the air, we don't have to figure out where the holes go and it'll make it so that all of our screws line up perfectly. Just need to whack it harder, I guess. Although this is now already dull. So maybe we're drilling them. Well, the awl we bought, it's already bent and we haven't even punched one hole. We're reluctant to drill because we don't want drill shavings to end up inside our metal and rust and cause other problems, but I think drilling might be our best option. Now that we have our wall panel pieces on, we can finish trimming out the window with the upper trim piece. All right, now that we got the trim on, it's time to put the rest of the screws in. This is probably our most complicated sheet because we've got a notch for the man door and then also that window up there on the same sheet. Women are allowed to use the door too. Someone asked you that and I was like, well, that's the man door. I get the roll up door. <laughs> we started with the most complicated wall because we're trying to get it done while we have the scissor lift. We only have it for a couple of days, but there's a steep learning curve to learning something new and being on the complicated wall. And it feels like we're just working at a snail's pace. Looks so good. What do you think? Is it going to fit? Heck yeah. We measured it twice. Okay. Yep, so we need to start by popping the top in. Why can't we go up? There we go. So I'll put one in to hold it there. So now we'll come down a little bit and make sure the side is blocked. So in a video about our window placement and how careful we were being about where the ribs and the windows lined up, I think there was some confusion there. We had a lot of comments asking us about it. So here's the detail and the reason why we did that. We're making this top trim of our window into sort of a gutter so that any water that comes down the wall lands in this top trim and will flow out and around the outside. And we did that by cutting a slit in the siding up here and the window trim slides up into that slit. So the siding comes over the top of the trim here, but the trim is on top of the siding down here. So it sort of shingles down and out. That's gonna direct any water away from the top of our window. 
If there had been a wall, a rib in our siding, right in this detail, instead of this being like a gutter and directing the water away, instead it would be like a funnel and it would direct the water straight into the side of the rib and into the back of our wall. This is another one of those tricks that came from Kyle at RR Buildings. Check out his YouTube channel, RR Buildings. Not only is it functional from a waterproof standpoint, but I absolutely love the way it looks. It's super clean, super tight. It's it is a lot also of work. really challenging and hard to get to line up right. <laughs> This one turned out pretty nice. Of course, we showed you the good one. I think the more we do it, the more comfortable we'll get with it, but it really does look awesome. Stop it. Riley. Jesus. <laughs> This tree branch has given us so much trouble. You think we would have trimmed it. I need to go high enough that I can tuck it in the top. Okay, I'm on my mark. All right, I'm letting go. We're losing daylight, but we're putting the last sheet on this wall up. And I'm gonna move it towards you, okay? Okay. You keep walking. Now these ribs are hitting okay. down here. That's all in. It's that one, and then the next one. There we go. Okay. Okay. Wow, looks good. 